The dissociative disorders are psychological conditions that involve disruptions or breakdowns of memory, awareness, identity, perception. Uh, this is a defense mechanism usually uh, that is cued by trauma or abuse and may be preceded by stress or psychoactive substances. Dissociative disorders involve like a trance state, a detachment, a disconnection, a split in mental life, a separation in consciousness, a loss of awareness. Another way to think of a dissociative disorder, it is a disconnection of thoughts, memories, surroundings, actions, and sometimes identity. It's an escape from reality as a reaction to some sort of trauma, abuse, or anxiety. Sometimes dissociation, which is a separation of mental processes, a trance-like state, a psychological mental split. Sometimes dissociation is a symptom of some other mental disorder like schizophrenia or Alzheimer's disease or borderline personality disorder or an eating disorder. But also, there are a group of disorders where dissociation is the main primary symptom. And so these are called the dissociative disorders. The book that is used by psychiatrists to diagnose mental disorders is called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or just the DSM. It is now in the fifth edition, so it's called DSM-5. And in the DSM-5, we have a list of dissociative disorders that include, number one, dissociative amnesia, number two, dissociative fugue, number three, dissociative identity disorder, and number four, depersonalization or derealization disorder. And so we're going to talk about those in this video. Dissociative amnesia occurs when a person has a trauma or a psychological shock that just overwhelms them and temporarily they lose their memory for personal information. They don't know their name. They don't know where they live. Fortunately, this is temporary and it will go away with support, emotional support and counseling. Another type of dissociative disorder is called fugue. And fugue is a word that's used in music also. It literally means flight. In this case, a person has a trauma and they run away. They escape, literally escape and mentally escape. So travel is always part of fugue. The person travels to a new location where their memory is lost or they create a new identity. Uh, so this is called dissociative fugue. Another type of dissociative disorder is called dissociative identity disorder or DID. This is what the public usually calls split personality or multiple personality. This is when a person has different, what we call alters or alternate identities, different identities or different states of personality that can change from one moment to another. This seems to be a defense mechanism, an escape mechanism that was based on some childhood trauma. So in childhood, when the brain is not very mature at all, not rational, a child has some trauma and to escape from the trauma, they develop a different identity. So they're not, I'm not Susie, I'm Margaret. And we think this might be uh, somewhat rare, although statistics show uh, it's about 1.5% of the population. That means about 15 out of a thousand people have some form of DID. So in dissociative identity disorder, people have many different identities or personality states that are due to some severe childhood trauma. They learn this defense mechanism, and then as they get older, they learn to do this more and more and more. And the purpose of the different alternate identities is to protect them from the conscious memory of the childhood trauma that would disturb them so very, very much. So these different identities serve the purpose of protecting them and therapy requires that we try to get the person to accept uh, these uh, th this childhood trauma that happened so they will no longer need those identities. 
One of the most famous cases of dissociative identity disorder, DID, was a woman named Christine Sizemore. You see her on the left. She wrote a book about her experiences, but also there was a book written by her psychiatrist called The Three Faces of Eve, and that was made into a movie starring Joanne Woodward. In fact, she won the Academy Award for Best Actress for that movie. So Christine Sizemore uh, it was a good example of a person who got cured of her dissociative identity disorder. And finally, one more dissociative disorder called depersonalization, or uh, more recently called depersonalization derealization disorder. This is when a person says, I feel like I'm in a dream. I don't recognize myself, uh, or I feel like I'm a robot, or I feel like I'm not in my body, or I worry that I'm not real. A person could even have out-of-body experiences where they feel like their mind or their consciousness, their awareness is separate from their body. Depersonalization is the most common of the dissociative disorders. It occurs actually at a pretty high rate, uh, and it has uh, these symptoms of feeling unreal or watching yourself act. It's similar to drug effects, like from LSD, for example. You can even have an experience called autoscopy, in which you see your body from the outside. Scientists have discovered that there is activity in certain areas of the brain during depersonalization, derealization disorder. These areas are the temporoparietal junction, which is where the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe come together, and the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. Now, this activity is primarily in the right hemisphere of the brain, which is shown here. And so some uh, therapies have been tried using repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation in which a, a very powerful magnet stimulates the cells in these areas of the brain. And that has been found to help about, oh, maybe 50% of people with depersonalization disorder. Dissociative disorders are almost always escape mechanisms, ways that the brain uses to escape from some kind of anxiety, child abuse, trauma of some sort. Uh, and it also has been found that these dissociative disorders are related to certain chemicals in the body called pyroles. And so some people take treatment of vitamin B6 or zinc, and that helps them uh, with their symptoms. That brings us to the end of this video. I'm psychology professor Bruce Heinrichs. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my videos. Bye.